Okay, and I'm gonna start it, okay? All right. Alles gut. Alles gut. We're gonna go to number one. Hold on, I have my controls. I'm gonna put them over here. Mm. Oh yeah, just go to the um list start of work. Tool. List of works. Click on that and then click mm -hmm. on the first picture. And then you get the navigation at the bottom. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Perfect. Okay. Well, hello everybody. Welcome. And we get the tour of Wunderland. And our first here is Yulia Kapustinska. She's a new artist to us from the Ukraine. And we really like the pieces that she had. And she is not here, correct? Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go to the next one. That's another piece of hers. I think that one's creativity during blackout. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then we have this. This one I'm very interested in. I wish we'd have her, but but I know with Ukraine, it's very difficult, but this one is, we will win the war. And I wonder if that's people she knows in the picture. Yeah, I wanted to ask or, you just too, if it's old family photos or, but um, we don't know. Okay, maybe she's coming on later and we can go back. Kind of yeah. reminds me of Boltanski's work with the faces. Oh, what was the artist's name? I'm not familiar with that Christian, one. Christian Boltanski. Ah, he used to, and I don't think he's alive anymore, but he has a would do lots of stuff with um, photos of people who were in concentration camps who were lost. Uh -huh. they're, they're very heavy pieces. There was a great big retrospective at um, MOCA many years ago. It's fabulous work. Mm. My took screen is crazy again. Okay, I'm going to go next. And we have here. Well, oh, I like that one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, our next one is Trompe la Mort. I don't think we have them. Mm -mm. Very interesting pieces, too. That one almost looks like a bath bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it is. <laughs> okay, next one. Uh, our other Ukrainian artist, but we have her quite often, Natalia Savchuk. She did some really nice pieces for this one. Mm -hmm. I think we have four of hers, right? Yeah. Yeah. Little kitty. <laughs> They're all watercolors too. Like I could never do that with watercolor. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, this next one, Gil Boz. He's new to us. And I believe that one is also a watercolor. Mm -hmm, I think so. US. And he's not with us, correct? Uh, correct. Okay. This one, I really like her stuff. We didn't get any of her info, but she's another Ukrainian artist, Irina Zastavna. Yeah, this is the first one of hers. And I know she has a few other ones through the gallery, but... Uh, yeah. Uh, um, these are Penny Stewart. We don't have Penny yet, but if she shows up, we can go back to these. Okay, I that sounds good. I really like this piece. Mm -hmm. She might come in later. She, she's, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is an artist that's new to us, uh, Marta Dominguez, and she's from Spain and does sculptures. Yeah, so the sculpture is... I don't have this. Oh, size. we got Arena. We can go back then. Let's do Matuk first. Yeah. 
Um, hi everyone. Um, so these these are mine, <laughs> and they all you on canvas. Both oil on canvas. Uh, I forgot how big they are. Um, I think there is a detail um, when you hover over. Them. I mean, I painted these a few <clears throat> a few years ago and create something trippy um, because um, really colorful and bright and garish. Um, yeah. Was it just experimenting with what you were doing? Sorry? Was it just experimenting with what you were doing? Yes, uh, pretty much. I only have uh, these two. Uh, it's kind of a dip pick. I don't uh, don't really make works like this, but um, this one they kind of fit the theme. Um, no, they they're definitely. Oh. oh, go ahead, Holly. They're really taking us on a journey. Uh, yeah. I spent a lot of time looking at these ones and I love the eyes separated from the face in the one on the left um I think they really do fit the theme it feels very psychedelic and mm -hmm. yeah you can just spend it it's, there's a lot of journey happy happening in these pieces I love the colors mm, thank you it's like a dream that you know like I would have a dream of things happening I mean, I've had not this particular dream, but it just feels very dreamlike to me that if I were to have a dream like this, this is exactly what it would look like. It's very cool. Thank you. you know, I really like the one on the left too, but they both have kind of almost a little mystical carnival feel to them. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, Eugene, you want me to go back? Uh, yeah, let's see. Arena, are you here? I'm not sure how the connection is. This was hers, right? Uh, yeah. The dream with the pink birds. And it's oil. I can just go ahead and if she gets a connection, maybe she texts you in between, we go back, okay? All right, I'll just go ahead. Yeah. Okay, who is our next? Oh, we have uh, after Matuk, it's uh, Monica. Okay, hold on. Don O'Sullivan is not here. Oh, yeah, he is. Oh, did I get the thing out of order? Yeah, I think so. Hello. Hello. Oh, no, what did I do? Oh, I'm looking at the wrong thing. That's why. I think you look at them and, uh, off the alphabet, right? There we go. Now I've yeah. got Okay. And it's Don's first time with us. Welcome, Don. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to tell us a little bit about these pieces? Sure, sure. Well, I, I do mostly photography and um, I try to do a little bit of beyond the reality. So I try to uh, paint with light and really use the opportunity to go beyond what I see or what is visible and to uncover a little bit what's behind the image. And so these are actually Christmas trees, but um, I opened the aperture very much so that you only get the lights. And, um, and I just like it because it, it revolves around these circles and they're of different intensity and they connect with one another. And so I think it's a, 
it's an abstract message that you get that's beyond the the actual reality of these trees. Now let me go to the other one too that we have all the I think we have three of yours. Mm -hmm. That's the second one. Yeah, yeah that's that's yeah. also yeah. That's Thomas. So I have only the second one, only oh, two. Second one that I see. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. also a, a, an interesting one because I didn't know what would happen. So it's usually a very creative process, but it's often uncontrollable. So um, this is actually something that has a lot of lights on it, a kind of a cage with a lot of lights on it that was installed for a street festival. And I decided to, um, again, change the reality a little bit or try to uncover a second layer of reality and turn the camera while I was taking the image and then it gets a little bit you know eerie spooky and maybe a little bit more mysterious with kind of darkness in the middle and the rings that surround it so it's it's I think what I like is if you have to if the viewer has to add to the image so it's not to totally clear what it is and you you yourself make an effort to understand what it might be. And I think I like that as an as an artist to allow the viewer to come up with their own version of things. I think it adds to, um, you know, it, 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 it sets that artwork free. And I don't really have to say what it is, but it's basically in the viewer themselves what they think it might be or what mm -hmm. it might evoke in them. In the center, it almost looks like an eye, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's why I chose it, actually, because I found that that was quite intriguing to have some kind of a reflection there that resembles a human eye. Mm -hmm. They uh, remind me of, uh, I guess, Ross Blechner. Have you ever heard of him? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not quite... Ross Blechner? Ross Blechner? Mm -hmm. He, uh, mm -hmm. similar, similar to what you're doing in terms of taking something... That you know, some re, re, real element such as your motif, and then blurring them to the point where it removes itself from the representational level into more of a sensation. You know, these things represent more sensations to me versus any kind of cultural. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah absolutely. It's kind of it transcends the the actual image and creates something mm -hmm. new. If you can Enjoyable. put that name of the artist in the chat, that would be great because I'm, I'm always interested to see you know other artists' work and how to get inspired and absolutely. Okay, thank you. Enjoy. Well, and that's what I love about the creative process too, because whether it's like painting or photography, a lot of us do experiments or play with things, and we don't know what the outcome is going to be, but that's part of the excitement of it. And you can get some of uh, the best things you have just out of that. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to have another photographer here, too. I don't think mm -hmm. we can have photography in here. We don't get enough, yeah. Can we look at the other one again? Mm -hmm. I first saw this and I was like, oh, I see the letter M. And I like how uh, <laughs> I tend to look for the letter M. Um, but I like how there's so many different things. It reminds me of Eugene's pieces, how every time you look at it, you can see something different or find something different or find a different shape. Um, you can find the shape in the, the negative spaces as well. Um, so this is, um, this is really fun. I, I really like this one. Hey, thank you. Yeah, I love how as a set together, we're looking at circles, we're looking at orbs and in terms of like falling down the rabbit hole, uh, <laughs> everything, that mystical realism. And I also with the, the second piece, really love kind of like that cyberpunk uh, portal <laughs> feel like I want to play this in a video game <laughs> <laughs> that's really cool that's very pretty or maybe an imagined picture <laughs> of a NASA black hole <laughs> when I when I saw when I looked at this um was the eye of an animal 
Mm. And um, it really draws you in. What I like is um, the bubble has a reflection on it. And it really, to me, it's it's like an abstract animal eye. I think it's really cool. And I'm biased, but um, I'm a huge fan. <laughs> All right, thank you. Let's go to Thomas. I think he may come on later. I know, didn't he tell us he was going to come on? Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure. Um, but this is Thomas Christians from Germany. Yeah, let's do next. And our next is Lavilia. She's shown with us before, but not in a while. Yeah. Um. Does not look like we have her though. I love these pieces, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're really interesting, too. Then our next is Austin. Uh, oh, wait. No, not Austin. Oops. No. Uh, Arena is the next one. Uh, there's all the two other ones of hers. Has she made contact yet with you? Or? No. Gee, Eugene, I wonder why you're drawn to this picture. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to go next. If she's, um, yeah. if she's coming up, just let me know, okay? We go back. I know, I like, I love that one. Bushido. Austin. Uh, this next one is Austin. Yeah, is Austin here? Uh, mm -hmm. I do not see him. Okay, that's too bad. I would have really liked to hear more about no, how Jesus too. But this is like really like fitting for Wonderland. This is just, you know, this one too. This is his other one. What's so funny is I see this one and it looks like a friend of mine named Josh. <laughs> I have to send this one to him because it looks like Josh's face. <laughs> Talk about cyberpunk. Oops. Yeah. Sorry. I can go back. Yeah, the um like this on the other one too, like this one. I just love those. And I know it's a photography with some computer animation or whatever he did. Uh some um well, he kind of does the similar to uh what my friend Steven, who he's shown with us before. He's with the band Eagle Likeness and his own band Stoneburner, but does art too. And he started uh using AI. But he does the same thing Austin does is it's very limited in what it can do. So yeah. he puts some of his pieces into it, but then he'll go back in and paint details into it. Mm -hmm. I love that use of it. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That is nice. Okay, and our next is our very own Connie Kurtu, which I love these. That's right. Thank you. I took them on a trip to, we actually went to all the four corners, but they have like Utah and Nevada and what else is there? Colorado and you know, I forgot the other one. Is it Texas? No. When did you guys go there? Arizona. Though. Arizona. Thank you. <laughs> Texas would have been too far. Yeah. But this is actually, uh, uh, this is, I think it's Arizona still. Mm. This one and this one too. Uh, yeah it looks like arizona skyline for sure yeah yeah it was uh really cold i think i don't know if you see in the in the back there's snow still on the um the ground over there too but it was uh, just really gorgeous um it's like hyper realism it's like not doesn't look real, but it is real. It's so cool. Yeah, I played a little bit in Photoshop with colors, mm -hmm. and it was definitely not as dark too. So, but I liked it this dark. It gives me like a moody feeling. Mm -hmm. You know, the first one kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, David Lynch, Lost Highway. This one, yeah. <laughs> and I, I love, love how the the highway disappears into you know the perspective of it in the second one it yeah. really um it almost looks like it's shooting into space like you drive it and he'll just like shoot up into the top of these uh, 
mesas what are they called foothills mesas i think so yeah but then this one is like you're on the side you're not on the road you're on the side of the road why are you not on the road i know it's, it's like, like they both have questions yeah. They remind me of the the cover for uh, American Gods, Neil Gaiman's. Oh yeah, American Gods. It's very cinematic, honey. It's gorgeous. Like, thank you. I want, I want to make a movie. Yeah, right. <laughs> with them, they're just really yeah. The color work is a really wonderful job. I just love those road trips. You know, when you go out and yeah. uh, when you look at something and you already know that's a good picture before taking it. You know you know this already and then but also because of the playing around afterwards it's like you cannot wait to get home and to actually play around with this and just change the mood or whatever you're in or what you feel at this moment so but the comp the composition is very pleasing too so thank you. credit to you it's not just nature <laughs> <laughs> thanks it looks like the uh, it brings the viewer into the picture too like that's being part of the picture you almost feel like a out there hitchhiking yeah. Thank you guys. Okay, who is next? I think probably me. Yes. Oh, it is our Eugene. Yoo -hoo. There we go. Uh this one's Noctigal and Nightingale. And uh this one, uh when I painted it, Frederick told me it had a very uh uh what what is it? Um Ivan de Earl, I don't know if you're familiar with his work, but he painted a lot of the backgrounds of Sleeping Beauty and uh, or all of the backgrounds really of Sleeping Beauty and did a lot of other things on it. Uh, but it uh, kind of had a almost Sleeping Beauty feel to it, which I definitely see in it. Of course, it gives me sort of a, believe it or not, a Gothic feel. Ah, I can see that. Like a high Gothic, you know, like the Sleeping Beauty Chateau has in a, in a Gothic kind of feel so i know i love to play what do you see in your paintings mm -hmm. um i see the back of an angel and the and the wings coming down from the shoulders oh yeah i can definitely see that mm -hmm. i was just gonna say the same thing <laughs> see, julie and i <laughs> great minds great minds <laughs> It almost has a little bit of a waterfall feel to it for me too. But this is one of the ones I actually, oh, I don't know what I did with it, but I have a necklace made out of that piece. So if you see me anywhere around with a pendant necklace, that's the piece that's in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very mystical. It has that, you know, pulling you in. It's seductive, seductive piece. Thank you. And this next one was uh, painted as a replacement, so to speak. It's not like the first one I have, but uh, Frederick was very upset when <laughs> uh, my, my piece Breathe went to the uh, art gallery to be sold. And so I kind of painted a replacement for it. This one's called Exhale, related to that, but it kind of has the down the rabbit hole alice -y feel to it. <laughs> Absolutely love it. Um, I mean, those are the most like penises I've ever seen in a few. I want to say too, it looks like little penises, like little penises, and then the whole. It's just, it's very alluring. Yeah. You have very seductive pieces in this show. Definitely right? penises, definitely for sure. It was funny too. That was completely by accident. But I'm like, yeah, that's exactly what it looks like. <laughs> An innuendo piece, if you will. <laughs> That's all I can see now. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Thank you. I think we can't unseen it now. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and our next one up is Larry. Larry. Yo. Hey, hey. Okay, so you know the sky. I live in Arizona, so I can recognize the skyline there. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. It's kind of a duality of this thing, you know, uh, looking at the skyline and we have amazing cloud formations after a monsoon. And sometimes you allow yourself just kind of lay on a grassy knoll, you can find one where you're, you're laying on your back and you're looking up into the sky. There is this kind of sense of wonderment based on the notion of scale. You know, historically, the idea of using scale goes back as far as the, the surrealists within the representational period of you know, Dolly and those guys using size and scale to maybe puncture or rupture reality opening up to another reality and for me it's a sense of wonderment and the uh the smiles and the lips are just an accent of that enjoyment basically wonderment and i think also i had a wonderment experience in when i was in college where i got a hold of some real acid laying on the ground looking up in the sky i could almost feel the rotation of the earth That one's relatable. I did tons of that in high school. <laughs> <laughs> that explains the dicks. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. That's all I got to say. I like those are braces, right? On the teeth. What's that? Braces what? on the teeth. Braces? I see braces on teeth. And look. Oh, it could be, could be, you know. But also, but also, I wear braces, so you know, I'm prone mm. to finding braces. I suppose I get very excited. Oh, look, like me. Well, so, you know, the clouds have their own kind of gestalt thing in terms of if you look at something representationally versus the, the pure form of it, it does shape things into things, you know. And there was a time where I would see stuff you know, projecting into it. You know, faces and lips and things like that. So it kind of references that to the same thing. Very cool. But the big, the big idea is the wonderment thing. Yeah. Because we live in a day-to-day -day socialized pattern, some of us can experience wonderment on a certain level. Let's be let ourselves go by way of drugs, art, or whatever. You know? One of my favorite things is uh, Heschel's idea of radical amazement. Hmm. Yeah. It's kind of that idea of, of seeing everything with wonderment. Yeah, that's an interesting place to be for sure. Yeah, it definitely takes you out of your body. The piece is like very floating. So this is up. We're looking up. Uh, right now, this one is looking at the skyline. At the very bottom, you'll see the landscape okay yeah yeah that gives it some kind of uh scale reference but know? then the clouds are flesh they're like fleshy they're a combination I, I... of the aerial part of the cloud but then i also just kind of collage these lips onto the yeah. clouds that's very cool Thanks. i would do drugs and look at this piece larry yes good well <laughs> okay uh, the piece doesn't come with drugs <laughs> but that's a good idea you might make more sales <laughs> you know or you know, the drugs come first and then sell you know, <laughs> as the, like an art of get me some molly or something I guess a different kind of salon <laughs> yes <laughs> black hat salon yeah Ooh. the good old days the opium dens oh yeah after make some art. Thank but the sky the skylines here are really amazing, especially the cloud formation. Because I mean, you know, I usually you know, live in San Diego and, and there's so many artificial things to obstruct the skyline. And also at night it's just totally black out here. So you see all the stars and everything. It's really great. That's all I got to say. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Larry. You okay. Next one is Holly. Holly is up. Yay. This is our friend. So uh, Garden of Memory. This is literally a garden from my past. And then also a reference to 
uh, all the things about memory in the Garden of Memory in Alice. Alice, um, Through the Looking Glass, Wonderland, very important story for me. I have um, one of the first edition copies and uh, I've always loved it. So we've got the the two different color of roses. We'll say it's white. It's really a yellow rose and a red rose. And then the rook um, bathing in the fountain. And yeah, been doing a lot of work with crows and corvids lately. Um, and uh, they're just very, very smart and really fun. And they love puzzles and they love figuring everything out. Um, but this one would come and it would wash its uh, little mice and um, dead <laughs> snakes and stuff in the fountain, as well as its body every day. So, uh, yeah, it's our good friend. <laughs> I had no idea they washed their food first. <laughs> That's amazing. Um but also, I just, I, I mean, that, that was that a common thing that they washed their food? I don't know. I mean, um, well, this one loved, this one really loved to. So it might be a personal preference. <laughs> <laughs> I love birds. <laughs> yeah. I, I love how it's slightly desaturated. It really does feel like a memory, you know, like how I, I would look through old photographs or I would remember things. Um, it has a, a kind of a dreamlike quality to it. And um, I am I am a big fan of your work. And uh, <laughs> this this really, the way you captured the drips of the water and how they're falling and, and how soft it is. I just, I love this. It really feels like I'm, I'm dreaming about something I used to know. Thank you. Oh, Holly, too. I sent you a link to, I don't know if you've heard it, but um, there's a, a podcast that Susie did where she narrates some of Alice in Wonderland, because of course, <gasps> and you could tell she was having a lot of fun doing it. So I sent it to you. Oh, thank you. That's amazing. Awesome. I'll share it in the group, too, if anybody wants it. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, that would be great. <clears throat> Okay, who's our next one? Adiola. She was here, right? Yeah. That's sweet. That's a sweet abstraction. I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to hang out. Hello? Yes. Hey, sorry. Uh, uh, Just going to show me? them and then, yeah, we can hear you. I just want to show you three okay. pieces and then go back. Oh. All right. I'm, I'm trying to get the destination. I was driving and I just got off the car so I can actually have a conversation without the noise. This is a piece uh, that I did and I called <clears throat> them um, Enchanted Landscape. And it's really it was inspired by dreams of that uh you know that i had growing up of a fairy landscape uh which is things that i envision from books that i read when i was young you know and, and i've always had the love for the forest and um think of the serenity that uh, one gets when you are in the forest surrounded by the towering trees and listen to the um, voices or sounds and also taking in the texture and, um, and the mysteries. It makes you think of the mystery beyond in the wonderland or in this uh, enchanted landscape. Um, and um, that's how the inspiration came. So I did a series of those uh, enchanted landscapes based on that dreams and how um, rem remembrance of growing up uh, those uh, memories that's it it's the, the mixed media acrylic and um, yeah
These are beautiful. I just want to get lost in them for hours. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. Very like lyrical musical to me. Like they're almost they're I don't know how to explain that any better that but they're musical to me. No, I don't think you need to explain it. I I uh, that that makes sense to me. <laughs> yeah, it's the it's the idea of that, you know, uh the stories of, you know, seeing the fairies and how you follow and you kind of galloping in the forest and moving around. Uh, that sense, I'm hoping that you get that from that. Now, the other one is not part of the enchanted for, uh, landscape, but it's also something that connects. I call that one lineage. That's a long one. And that's really... Uh, uh, it has a lot to do with connecting with each other, uh, the lineage of who we are, where we come from, and what it leads. Um, but it has that mystery of that wonderland in trying to find your connections and trying to find, you know, uh, your tribe, your people, and how you connected. And I think we're all connected in some fashion or the other. I love that it, it, I want to touch it. It looks very tactile and I love the Thank magic you. of the fairies in the forest too. That's such a unique feeling when you're a little kid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And just being like connected. Hmm. Yeah, the, the lineage has a lot of uh, texture on it. So, and oh, yeah. the blocks of you know, connecting with each other. Yeah. I think we're hearing the fury, that moment of silence. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I felt like I was, I was in the forest for a minute when everything was quiet. <laughs> Even People walking around me going to the convention center. Ever since there was no one around when you guys were quiet. No <laughs> one was around, no one was walking by. So I was like, okay. <laughs> and, and now there are droves of people walking by. <laughs> so that's it. You know. Oh, thank you, Adiola. We, we love having you and your pieces too. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Our next is Monica. Monica. I need myself. Hello. Okay. So there's two that go together and then one that, you know, one of these things is not like the other. Um, so obviously these two go together. So for me, my first experience um, in a residency, an artist residency in uh, 29 Palms was last year, actually at this time. And um, so these two pieces for me, um, using found objects and being an assemblage artist, it was truly a wonderland. These are all made, other than the paint and the, the mesh tape I brought, and, um, made with things that I found there. And it was it was a desert wonderland. It was so different than what I was, I mean, I've been to the desert, but I've never like immersed myself in art and desert for two whole weeks you know, and, and explored and, and found things and then thought about how to put them together. And so it's not as much um, the pieces themselves as it is the, um, what that experience was like. And everything I found was like a gift from the desert. Um, and, uh, and it was, if it's like, I, I found rusty things. I found wood things. I found, it was just, so exciting to me to go on these little trips of discovery each day and see what I could find out there. And there's there's so much what other people would call junk. And I'm like, ah, beautiful cast offs. I love you. Um, so the um, the colors I used are based on colors in either things I found or uh, the the skies at different times or the mountains are at different times. So I was influenced by the atmosphere as well. Um, so this was, I call this one searching. 
I had to double check. It's like, is that? Yes, it is. Um, and um, just because that's what I was doing, I was searching this new environment. I was searching within myself. There was a lot of uh, solitude, um, which I'm also not used to, and I and I loved it. And I'm actually going back in a few weeks. Um, and um, I just, just again, for me, it was a truly, it was a wonderland. And then the other one, um, same kind of thing, but there was this sailboat in the middle of 29 Palms next to a nicer one, but this was like totally abandoned and, and who knows how many years it's been there. And um, so I used pieces I found and then the, the composition and the colors are based on this sailboat I saw in the middle of the desert. It just makes no sense to me. <laughs> Plus it, had, again, it was very weathered um, and very old and again, made with objects that I, I found there. Are these on canvas, Monica? These are on- or These are on, on the found wood. On, on, no, no, on, I brought um, panels with me, press board panels, um, because I, I didn't know what I was going to find. So I brought, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to bring with me this year. I haven't decided if I'm going to, what, if anything, I'm going to bring other than tools. I haven't decided, but um, not knowing what it was going to be like at all, I brought a bunch of panels and then I worked on those. I love how the string can um, kind of tells you where your eyes should go. And in the first one, I saw a big torch in the middle mm -hmm. and then a hand reaching through the fence to hold the string, to grab the torch. It's almost like immigrants grabbing freedom. That's so cool. That's even cooler than I had ever thought of. I love that. Thank you. I'm adopting that. <laughs> <laughs> or the torch reminds me too. The torch is a symbol of Hecate too. Oh, yeah. I don't know why. I just these were very intuitive pieces, um, which I find I can do more when I'm there, um, and and they just came together. Very cool. Like, I'm such a fan, Julie. <laughs> It's so 29 too. I know exactly the sailboat you're talking about. Um, <laughs> and like, it just, that part of the world opens you up in different ways. And that idea of like the desert mariner, that's very mystical. I love that. Like the voyage. There's, um, there's ships that they found on the Silk Road, uh, buried ships with tall redheaded people in them. And they don't know what culture they came from. And that's what the sailboat one makes me think of. It's the ships in the desert. You guys come up with the coolest stuff. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, I love that. Thank you. Well, we're inspired by you. You're giving us <laughs> things to think about. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I really I love the color choices. Mm -hmm. The color choices are so nice. The palette. I just love how you drew everything in and, and you know the little pieces of ceramic you know tie into the background it's really cool thank you I was really I was influenced by this this book I, I did take a picture of it and I hope it's still there when I go back next month <laughs> if it's not I'm just going to be so curious what happened to it <laughs> and then the other one my silly little <laughs> Every time I hear the word Wonderland, I think of the song, Boogie Wonderland. Um, and where I heard that song most was in when I used to go to the roller rinks and they would play the song. And it's such, um, it's like a, <laughs> technically I'm like, ah, oh, the letters look awful and it's all crayon -y to me. But um, it was really fun to make and it was fun to think about like I listened the entire time I made it, I listened to Earth, Wind and Fire and other, you know, like disco songs to keep me in the mood of it. And um, I also used a lot of UV reactive paint. So, uh, you know, if you just have a, a UV light on it, 
also because I'm preparing for Neotropolis, which I can explain another time. And I'm going to be there um, in April. So I have a lot of UV stuff. So I'm like into this glowing phase. Um, but this like, I was I was thinking about the the carpets they have in uh, roller rinks or, or used to have I haven't been in one in so long and so the the background is totally like things you would see on a roller rink car carpet <laughs> and um, and then the roller rink and the and the letters and I'm just it was just fun it was fun to do and the I used to love going roller skating <laughs> never quite mastered going backwards but. You know, I guess maybe there's still time before I'm too old and I'll break a hip. Oh, I'm terrible at roller skating, but I still have fun at it. I actually have to run into the wall to stop. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> me too. <laughs> but we went with a ton of friends, and the carpets still look like that. But we went with my friends to a roller rink, and it was actually they reserved it just for themselves, so it was just the birthday party, and that was a lot of fun. <laughs> Maybe I'll do that. When they do it as now. That's fine. So yeah, that's my fun little piece. Thank you. Yeah. No roller skating, Monica. <laughs> I'll work up to it. <laughs> All right, and our next. Thank you, Monica. And our thank next. You. Uh, Edward. No, oh, well. I recognize the song lyrics, of course. <laughs> Good to be back with you guys. Yeah. Um, this is uh, more, I don't know, some of you may know this or not, but all my abstractions the last several years have been from photographs of atomic testing sites, and then they're abstracted out. This particular series, I decided I was going to put <laughs> really apocalyptic statements on them. <laughs> this one's not, so I'm sure this is why it's in the show. <laughs> But a lot of them are um, pretty revelations and pretty pretty downer. But this one, the words are pulled from a, a song by Coil. Um, Eugene, you probably know it. Window pain. Window pain, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's your there's our acid reference right there. <laughs> and they were they were fun to do. They were kind of a pain in the ass because those letters are built into the piece. They're not put on top. Oh. So that was a lot of a uh, really small brushes and uh, a pain, but worth it. And they're on paper; they're not on canvas. And I wanted to let the um, you know the gessos, the different, the white and black gesso show, so it frames it itself. And it's just, I mean, having fun with words, making them kind of pointed. You know, they're as I say from from atomic bomb testing, but when you start putting revelations and other things on them, they get kind of <laughs> really heavy. This yeah. one was light, but still having fun with that for years now with those ato atomic explosions, there's so many of them to use, hundreds of them. So more fun with explosions. It's just kind of the thing. I know that's the scary part is the amount that you have to choose from. <laughs> yeah, there's about of the underground ones, there's well over 800 of them. Wow. I know it's kind of overwhelming. So, anyhow. I love that this has a mandala quality and they feel like amoebas to me. So, yeah, you know, the, the shock destruction Shiva, part. destruction. The abstraction part on the computer is a kaleidoscope program. So Mandala's kaleidoscope yeah. kind of throws it that way. And then the colors are like what the photograph had in it. So the orange would have been poppies blooming in the desert. The red usually was rocks. The green would have been some scrub brush. And the computer flattens it out for me. So Very makes, cool. It you know, makes it nice. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, thank you, Edward. And I think that makes it it for us. Yes, I think so. Yep. We 
path. Um, oh, you can't put pictures in here. Well, we do have an open call. Uh, our next one's Einheit, which is Unity. And so definitely uh, everything's due by the 28th. And then uh, we will also be releasing April's pretty April's theme pretty soon too. 